could be the next James Bond. Could I? I reckon. I guess no one's doing it right now. Someone's got to do it, I guess. Barbara, get on the blower. You have a word of her, see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I suppose I had a similar route to what Lenny had. Like, I had, there was, let's say, someone that I was interested in who, who was going to do this thing called National Youth Theatre, um, which I'd never really heard about and or, or didn't really know that anyone anyone who had done it. I didn't kind of grow up going to the theatre. When I, I, I always loved television, loved films, and loved Christmas time because that's when, like, the films from the movies were going to be on television, you know, so you could watch them for free. Um, but I kind of didn't really connect to that job as some uh, uh, to to the role of an actor as being a job. You know, I thought they were just like mm. film stars, celebrities. They existed in this different planet, in this universe, and they were just born like that, and that's what they did. I didn't realise it was something that you could learn about, you could like develop, you could go on your own career pathway to get towards. Um, but yeah, then then I kind of yeah, so I followed this girl to National Youth Theatre. She disappeared, but and I was there uh, for two weeks, and yeah, suddenly surrounded by a different people, different people who were like very different to the people I kind of grew up with or went to school with, or whatever, um, who were really excited about like theatre, plays, auditions, drum school, all of that kind of stuff, and that kind of like provided a little pathway, doorway into a new world for me which I just loved. I was going to go down a different route. I was going to be, be a doctor at a place at medical school. Do you remember that first sort of interaction with the audience that maybe kind of gave you that bit of buzz, that bit of energy? Yeah, I did, a, I did a school play. I did... Um... Oh, me and my girl? Yeah, oh, you know about it, yeah. yeah I do, yeah, I do. Yeah. You've done I your research. Bit, yeah. yeah, I did me and my... Oh, I, I said I did me and my girl. I was... I played a postman <laughs> in me and my girl, <laughs> and I had, like, one scene. Um, and I can't even remember what the line was, but I had, like, some, like, dumb, like, joke line that made people laugh and suddenly like people are coming up to me and like talking about it and yeah there's a there's a certain you know rush when you like a light on something that feels truthful between yourself and the audience um that is validating and illuminating and kind of, yeah kind of wonderful so like my kind of career onwards has been like kind of trying to recreate that moment on a grander scale and, and try and make it a sustainable thing for me to be able to survive off of. So, Deborah Finley. Deborah Finley? Yeah. Oh, gee. Like, <laughs> put some respect on the woman's name, right? She's been out here in these streets since the 90s. She's like a very, very, very um, uh, important figure in my life. She was like my, my first mentor in the industry when I came out of drama school. Um, you, you get set up with someone who's in the industry. Couldn't find someone more different to me, you know? Like, okay. um, but like she's, like her heart is huge and like she's so, 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 so brilliant. Um, both on screen and on stage and yeah, the most lovely woman. About trying to retain some authenticity. Yeah. That in the industry you can kind of get position to be this role, do this, you're this, you're that. And he said, no, you've got to try and retain who you are and mm -hmm. believe in that. Mm -hmm. How have you tried to, do you have to sort of to remind yourself and focus on that? How do you sort of retain that sort of authentic approach? I think I've got to be true to myself, regardless of whether that's right for this or not. Yeah, with much consciousness, because like I feel like if you allow yourself to give away that power, or if you allow yourself to be passive um, in, in your own journey, then people will, you, you leave yourself very vulnerable to people like type passing you or telling you you're, you've got to be this kind of person, this kind mm. of character, this kind of actor, whatever, because it's easy, you know, and like everyone's stressed, everyone's busy, and no, one's got, no one cares about you as much as you think they do, and you know, like you've got responsibility to yourself to protect your own authenticity and your own sense of self. Let's go to a plot twist, the first one. It's, I guess, the ultimate plot twist in, in your story. So we see it a lot in TV and film and sort of something we don't expect and it can change the trajectory, the story, the narrative of that individual yeah. potentially. What's the biggest one for you? Well, I mean, I really said the med school to drama school plot twist, which was a big one at the time, you know, because I was really kind of like set on that route and like to go to med school is not easy. You've got to like do all these science levels and you've got to do these like aptitude tests and you've got to do like work experience. I worked in like a old people's home for like two and a half years, worked in a co-op pharmacy for three years, you know? So like, uh, other than that, it, I, I kind of, I, I honestly do kind of feel it every single time. I feel like every job that I take feels like a plot twist and feels like it's um, entering into the unknown. Sam Troughton. Sam Troughton. 
Um, what can I say about Sam? Sam it's, is, it's funny because he's, he's part of your story, but also he's in series two. Of, yeah, I know. Uh, so like, he, he, he's reinvented himself as a character <laughs> in my life. Yeah. You know, so we did a play together um, ten years ago, probably at the National Theatre, and I was understudying him. And, um, but like I'd also seen him when I was in drama school playing Romeo for the RSC and like just like kind of like quite Titanic figure um, that I, I really looked up to or look up to. And, but like in, in series two of Lazarus Project, we're, we're, um, we're, we're co-partners and he's just like hilarious. He's also an enormous Man United fan. So oh, really? that's where a lot of our, B- our kind of like shared like... trauma okay. um, comes yeah. from. That has brought us uh, very closely together, but I love Sam. The Lazarus Project. The Lazarus Project. Let's talk about it. Yes. So, as I say, I binged all of it again yesterday. Thank you. And I mean, it's just this emotional roller coaster. It's gripping. Yeah. It must be. It must be incredibly fun to do. I imagine. I just get the vibe from watching you in the cast. It must be very, very much enjoyable. But I tell you what, the story. I time travel is like quite a sexy sort of concept. But in this, it makes me feel like I'm not sure I want to be a part of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think Joe's. Uh, so Joe Martin, our, our writer, who is um incredible incredibly successful but also just like a, a kind of singular mind um yeah from the jump was 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 really keen to 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 i suppose like dig into what time what into the reality of time travel you know which kind of feels ridiculous to say but um yeah it can be seen as this like quite frivolous kind of or like light-hearted uh, conceit that um, we uh, so many of the movies and TV shows of the years that we loved uh, based upon, but we really wanted to like go into like what is the moral, what is the emotional, what is the psychological implication of being involved in uh, or having or being presented with the responsibility around time travel. Tell me about your dreams. So you've been reading the script <laughs> late at night. I, I don't sleep much. I, I can't blame Joe specifically for that. Like we, 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 we like I, I'm a little bit like all enough when it comes to things that I get involved with. But like definitely when I'm, when when we're working on this, I, je- I I'm not lying. I don't sleep a lot. I probably get about five six hours sleep a night when we're working on this, just because it's like so it's so high octane. Lenny James. Lenny. Big Lenny what a guy. James. What a guy, man. He He's the like <laughs> the sexiest man in London is what they call him. <laughs> um, yeah, Lenny James, he's family to me. We did a play last year called The Number at the Old Vic. Um, two-hander, where I play uh, three different um, versions of his son. Um, but yeah, he's got like incredibly paternal energy towards me as well. And um, yeah, he he he's one of the reasons I became an actor. He did uh, he did a play and a TV show. Yeah, short. Uh, I guess a feature-length TV show called Fallout in maybe 2007 or whatever. Mm. I watched that. I watched his performance in it, and it really made me think. Wow, there's there there is something to this acting lark, and there are some people out there who are British and black and amazing at it, and I want to be like that. I honestly like view like every single new person that I end up working with as like a potential like someone to learn from, or someone to be inspired by, and. And so many people have been like that. Plot twist. Available wherever you get your podcasts.